everyone, this is take two. I already drew my doodle on take one. So lots of people in Comicsgate are talking about gatekeeping. And the thing is, when I say I hate Twitter drama, I mean it, but gatekeeping is an important topic. So I'm, I'm not showing my screen. I'm not going to do like a live screen capture of the Twitter conversations because I haven't read the Twitter conversations enough to know everyone's position or the fullness of their argument. Unfortunately, some of what people are arguing about seems to be kind of behind the scenes from private conversations and public conversations. So we are shoving aside the Twitter drama because I want to talk about gatekeeping and think about it and maybe help give you some helpful things to think about gatekeeping, kind of from my art, my perspective as someone who's uh, had shows within, you know, like institute in big art institutions and thinking through some of the issues of that. So uh one of the things that prompted this is I mentioned on DC Fans United's live, live stream last night that I was planning to have a live stream with Cowboy Steel today. I am waiting to hear back from Cowboy Steel because I did not realize just how hot a topic this was going to be. And I want to give Cowboy Steel the biggest audience possible. So I'm going to let him make the decision on whether we go for our live stream at our scheduled time uh, or whether we reschedule it and hopefully get have an opportunity for more of you to watch because you won't be watching this EVS live stream. So with that, uh, what is gatekeeping? Uh, well, it, it is what the term says it is. There's a fence, there's a big old wall around success, and there's a little gate where you can come in and come out. And the, the I've written here comic book success. So in the comic book culture, when we're talking about gatekeeping, we're talking about people being kept out of success in the comic book industry. From my experience in the arts, you could think of an art museum show as something like this. If you have an art museum show at a major museum, that's a big deal for you. It's going right on your resume. It's going to introduce you to tons of people. But the thing is, the museum, uh, by giving you an art show, is sort of lending you credibility. They're saying you are a worthy artist. You belong in our amazing art museum space. So uh, the thing is that almost anything in life has some gatekeeping to it to keep you know, bad stuff out and let good stuff in. So if you show up at the museum with your notebook doodles on uh, blue lined paper, the museum is not just going to pin that up on the wall. They expect you to have some level of success, meet some sort of progressive avant-garde art criteria and pretty much know the right people to get into the art museum space. And that's one of the things that kind of turned me off about postmodern art and contemporary art in general is the clickishness of it. Uh, when people talk about gatekeeping, they're talking about a similar thing in the comic book industry. It's not what you know, it's who you know that gets you in the door and gets you comic book success. But think about it. If Marvel and DC published every single comic book submission that got sent to them by you know a teenager wanting to break into comics, the Marvel and DC brand would be damaged. You wouldn't know when picking up a Marvel or DC book if it was going to be an amazing book or if it was going to be like uh, Scribbles. And look, it's Spooderman, guys. And I'm in a Marvel comic book. I drew Spooderman. So the, the reality is that uh, the problem with talking about gatekeeping is that in reality, every single comp company is going to have to gatekeep at some point. The only thing I could imagine wouldn't is if we could imagine some sort of imaginary publisher. We'll call them like free speech comic book company, free speech comics. So we're imagining this imaginary company, free speech comics, and they will literally print anything. Yeah, because that's what they believe in. They believe in free speech absolutism. They'll print any Nazi comic. They'll print any SJW comic. They'll print anything. And the problem is that means that free speech comics would print a lot of garbage. They'd print a lot of good stuff. They they literally print everything. I think the closest thing to free speech comics we have is the internet. You can put your comic on the internet and you won't make that much money from it, but there is a venue for you to share it. Any other company or group is going to have like some ins and some outs. And so what people who dislike gatekeeping are worried about is that the uh, the opposition is going to become just like the people that they hate. You either die a hero or live, you live long enough to see yourself become a villain. So what do people hate about gatekeeping in the comic book industry? That worthy people are getting pushed out. So maybe someone like POTUS Thump or Chuck Dixon, they come up to the gate, the SJW at the SJW comic, Gates says, nope, you don't belong here, you Republican Trump voter, and off you go. You've been kicked out of the comic book industry uh, for your for having the wrong political opinions or for saying something they find offensive online. Meanwhile, they're letting in 
un, people who don't merit it, people who are not very good drawers, people who are not very good writers, based on them having the correct the correct political attitudes. So uh, even though I've said that functionally, every comic book company isn't going to be able to publish every single idea that comes to them. And most people don't have a problem with that. Most people who say they have a problem with gatekeeping have a problem with this sort of political, uh, you, you get in, if we say you get in based on things that have nothing to do with the merit of your work. I think what most people want is they want a merit, they want a meritocratic system. They want to see you get in on merit if you merit attention. So why is this? Uh, so we know about this in the SGW comic industry. So what's this got to do with Comicsgate? Well, uh, what's being argued is that Comicsgate has kind of reached this point where we now have a wall around us and there are gatekeepers for the comic book industry. So there's the wall because there's no point to having a gate, gate if you don't have a wall around everything else. So people are coming in. They want to get noticed me senpai by Comicsgate, but they're being pushed away by Comics gate gatekeepers. Now, there are a couple ways in which I think this analogy uh, falls apart a little bit, which is that unlike art museums or the comic book industry, Comics gate doesn't have an industry yet. There is no publisher that is directly affiliated with Comics gate that you can go to and say, I am part of the Comics gate, the Comics gate Twitter community. Can I publish my Comics gate themed char character? But there's enough of a community and there's, a, there's enough uh, attention that people are now starting to notice that the, the, this, this kind of gatekeeping could occur within comics gate community. Yeah. Uh, I, I hate this because it feels like it's entirely the wrong emphasis at this point. Now, this could just me, be me kind of seeing my own biases, but I would much prefer to see people focusing on what is social justice over here. You know, if we say SJW, are we just using that term inflexibly? I'd pref So when I'm talking about SJWs, what I'm really talking about is the academic, postmodern left. I think that's more important than any of the jokes about SJWs. But the academic postmodern left would be my submission for a technical definition of what I'm worried about when I joke about SJWs. So in my calculus, rather than Comicsgate kind of infighting with each other, like Gamergate used to do a lot of infighting with, you know, who was a proper representative of Gamergate, I would much rather we all focus more of our time and attention on understanding and dealing with this problem. But if I uh, it, there, there's some sense to the idea that you can become what you hate, that you could become so obsessed with the idea of comics gate that you don't notice that you're becoming just like the SJWs you dislike. So I better talk about what the issue was that sparked this. So you have some idea of why this is even being talked about. So pretty, uh, problem is I haven't bothered to watch all these live streams because I don't, I don't care that much about the prompt of this discussion, but pretty much EVS has Mark Miller on his show, and Mark Miller is going to draw a poster with Comicsgate related characters, and uh, some some characters got flubbed, which you would think would be included in a Comicsgate poster. So now the question is, oh well, are they gatekeeping you know certain creative individuals by not including them in the oh, brother? I hate Twitter drama. Never mind. Never mind. I'm not going to comment on that nonsense. Enough. No, I don't care about the Twitter drama. Okay. Twitter is important if we're dis discussing important issues, but when we're getting, when we're talking about who, who's who in a poster, I feel like, uh, I, I don't care. Okay. There are people who are trying to destroy the, the, the concept of beauty. I would much rather emphasize this. I'm sorry. Tangent contained. All right. The, the principle that's important is, uh, can we keep anyone out of Comicsgate? If an SGW comes out of the industry and says, hey, I want to publish at a Comicsgate company, should we let them in? So the argument for letting them in is kind of like a free market argument. We're a big umbrella. We love diversity of opinion. You can have your SGW opinion in here. The argument against letting the SGW in is that Comicsgate is sort of functionally an anti-SJW movement. So if you let the SJWs in, then they start doing the same thing here that they did over there. And that's tough. Now, I am a free speech absolutist. I am a free market capitalist. So rather than try to talk about Comicsgate as a vague idea, let's imagine instead that we're talking about, I make a million dollars of YouTube shekels and I make number one 
Marmaduke fan comics. Now, since, I, since I'm kind of on record that I love lots of variety in artistic styles, I like cartoony styles, I like simple styles, I like detailed styles, I would probably be open to a lot of things being published under the name of number one Marmaduke fan comics. But here's the thing. Number one Marmaduke fan comics is not free speech comics. If you bring me like a, a lolly hentai and say, hey, number one Marmaduke fan, will you print my lolly hentai? And underneath the name number one Marmaduke fan comics underneath your name, there will be printed a lolly hentai. I wouldn't do that because that does not represent the morality of who I am. Now, if I do that, am I violating my free speech principles? No, I'm not because uh, I am investing my capital into making a comic book company. I want what I publish to reflect what I value in the world of comics. I'm not going to publish your stick figure lolly hentai because I there are things that I, even though I love a variety of styles and a variety of skill levels, there are still expectations I have for like a minimum standard of beauty and meaning and morality in storytelling. And the thing is, if you tell a very moral, beautiful story, I might be more forgiving of you having, you know, goofy, silly art or something. But but the point is that if I make my own comic book company and I gatekeep out the lolly hentai, I am not uh, I'm not violating my free speech principles, nor am I gatekeeping in the sense of keeping out people just because they disagree with me or because they don't you know, kiss, kiss my ring enough. I have a defined moral principle, no gross hentai in the number one Marmaduke comics company, and I am sticking to that principle. Anyone can understand what the principle is, so there can be clarity. When there's less clarity, it's less clear like who's in, who's out, and what you get for being in. And... At, at this point, uh, there's going to be a live stream tonight discussing the nitty gritty of some of these things, if you're interested. But at, at this point, we don't. there's no comics gate industry yet for us to gatekeep people out of. But people can sense that as more and more people succeed making comics for the comics gate crowd, then gatekeeping can become more of an argument within the, within the community. You have to be a certain level of cool to succeed within the comics gate community are we going to punish people who have wrong th think within the comics gate community and my i guess my only takeaway would be i would much rather you emphasize making good work making excellent work if you do comic book reviews on twitter or youtube focus on doing really good comic book rev reviews and uh dis discussions of the merits and the weaknesses of these comics make it a real substantive critique. And uh, I, I, I just feel like the overall tenor of the debate, not picking on any side, because this is an important issue. I feel like the overall tenor of the debate is kind of making mountains out of Twitter, Twitter molehills, where the argument is basically about a poster, and, but it's also about the principle of gatekeeping. The principle of gatekeeping is an important principle. I feel like we're going to forget about whatever this poster thing was in a few weeks and none of us will care, which is why I scratched it out and gave up talking about it. But uh, I'm going to watch this. I, I, I don't know if I'm going to watch this live stream tonight, but uh, I, I got to keep thinking about this pretty much. What I want to leave you with is make good work, give people the benefit of the doubt, uh, Listen, think critically, uh, be polite as you make disagreements. And it, 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 it's, I'm not saying don't discuss gatekeeping within Comicsgate. I'm saying even as you discuss something contentious within Comicsgate, be civil and thoughtful as you do it. And I believe that this is a conversation that people will have out. I'm number one Marmaduke fan. Sorry for thinking out loud again, but I love you guys. and I'll catch you later.